What's up guys, and today I have with me the brand new HomePod by Apple. And this guy officially hits the shelves today in the US for $349. So if you want to pick one up for yourself, you can head to your local Apple store or Best Buy or any electronics store and they should have them in stock. Anyway, in today's video, I'm just going to do a quick hands-on unboxing and setup of this smart speaker. Now with me I have not one but two unopened HomePods, one in the space grey color wave and the other in white. So to start off, let's take a look at the exterior of the box and then jump right into unboxing and setting up this device. Once it is set up, I'll demo a couple features on the HomePod and then I'll give my first impressions of it. So without further ado, let's take a look at the HomePod and see exactly what comes in the box. So to start off, I'm just going to unbox the white one and then set that up and then we'll come back for the space gray one. So the outside of the box is pretty simplistic and clean. I'm shocked at how heavy this guy is, but it's probably what is to be expected for such a high quality speaker. Anyway, to open this guy up, it looks like we have an easy to peel off tag at the top denoted by this green arrow. So I'm just going to pull up on this and strip the outer plastic away. And now we're just going to lift the lid of the top of the box to reveal the HomePod. Now taking this guy out of the box and setting it aside real fast, all that is left in the box is this little pamphlet. It looks like it's going to include similar instruction packets and warranty information and stickers just like the iPhone boxes. So here we have some instructions on how to set up the HomePod and that's what we're going to do next. Now I'll just go ahead and plug in the HomePod here and see exactly what it does. So right on the top when it's booting up it looks like we have this nice animation logo on the top display of the HomePod. And here is where some other controls and functions can be formed as well on this panel but we'll get into that a little bit more once we set it up. We have a nice little boot up sound there, that was pretty cool. So while this is loading, I'll get my iPhone ready. You will have to use an iDevice running iOS 11.2.5 or newer to set this guy up. I'm actually using the second beta iteration of 11.3, so hopefully this will work okay for demonstration purposes. Now the HomePod is supported by a wide range of iOS devices, I'll have the compatibility list on the screen now. But unfortunately right now there is no Android support for this. So in theory this should work just like setting up AirPods. You just place your phone next to the HomePod and the phone should automatically find and pop up dialog box displaying the setup steps. So to set this guy up it's super simple. You'll just place your phone right next to the HomePod and then you'll receive this little prompt notifying you to set it up. So if we go ahead and click on setup the first thing it will ask is where the HomePod is located at. And for now I'll just say my bedroom. It gives you a prompt to set up Apple Music, but I'm just going to skip this for now as I typically use Spotify. And while we're on the topic of Spotify, for now only Apple Music is natively supported, although you can airplay other music services for the time being. Next up we have the option to enable personal requests like sending and receiving messages, creating reminders and notes, but surprisingly I don't see the ability to add calendar events. Anyway, I'm just going to click enable as I'm the only one who lives in my apartment. But just as a fair warning, anyone can ask Siri questions. It's not just limited to your own voice, like the personal assistant on your phone or iPad is. That being the case, if the HomePod is set up with your phone, anyone can access your phone's messages or reply to them using your HomePod. So use this feature at your own risk. Lastly, we're just going to agree to the terms and conditions, and then we're going to transfer our accounts and settings from our phone to our HomePod. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and see what happens. It looks like we have a little bit of a sound response from the HomePod, but it looks like that is it. That is how to set up the HomePod on your iDevice. I'm guessing there's going to be a few post steps on the HomePod itself once it's done syncing, but those shouldn't be too complex either. Hi, I'm Siri. Welcome to HomePod. You can't tell, but I'm waving. To get my attention, say, hey Siri, let's try it. Say, hey Siri, what can you do? Hey Siri, what can you do? I can do lots of things, like turn on the lights, give you a news update, and tell you about the weather. Now you try. Say, hey Siri, play some music. Hey Siri, play some music on my iTunes library. There's nothing in your music library. Remember, anytime you have a question, just say, hey Siri. Hey Siri, play the radio. Now tuning in to Beats 1 my favorite radio station on earth. Remember, anytime you have a question, just say, hey Siri. 
So for some reason, my HomePod didn't want to play anything in my iTunes music library. I don't have Apple Music, but I did download some music manually to my iPhone. Unfortunately, it wouldn't just automatically play that, so I had to airplay it from the music app to my HomePod. Hey Siri, turn the volume up to 100%. That's very loud. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, I changed it. So you can ask Siri to do some pretty simple commands like turn the volume up or down. You also have these physical buttons on the top of the HomePod to do just that as well. Also if you tap in the center of the HomePod, you can pause or play the current track that you're listening to and if you tap and hold, you can summon Siri that way as well. Hey Siri, what's the weather like today? It's currently cloudy and 46 degrees in Portland. So Siri can give you detailed information about the local weather. You can also use Siri with many popular HomeKit accessories like Philips Hue lights. Hey Siri, set my studio lights to red. Okay. Hey Siri, set my studio lights to purple. All set. Hey Siri, turn my overhead lights on. Okay. Hey Siri, set my lights to record bright. Okay, your scene is set. So that is pretty much it as far as an unboxing, setup, and demo goes for the white HomePod here. Now like I said, I have two HomePods and I only have the one in the color wave of white, but I also have the space gray one as well. So let's recap a little bit and go back in and take a look at the HomePod in the space gray color wave for the second time around. So the packaging, as you guys can see, is pretty much the same aside from the mesh now has a black or darker look to it compared to that of the white, but you peel off the plastic just the same way, you lift up the box to reveal the HomePod in just the same way, and as you guys can see, it's definitely not a black HomePod, it's a really dark gray, but one thing I did like is that the cord for this is actually a dark gray cable as well compared to that of the white one, which had a white cable to match that one. Anyway, when setting up the second one, there isn't too much new on the setup process, but one thing I did notice, since I'm running iOS 11.3 beta 2, it did give me the option to set it up as a stereo pair. Now I thought, wow, this is awesome that the HomePod actually can be used in a stereo setup if you just install the beta on your phone. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Even though I went through all the settings and it actually did set them up as a stereo pair within the HomeKit, there is no actual way to play stereo sound or to get both the HomePods to play at the same time. Again, this feature is soon to come and it's very likely we will have to see a HomePod software update before this feature can actually be enabled. Anyway, that is pretty much the entire unboxing, setup, and demo of both the white and space gray HomePods. Tell me which one down in the comments you guys like better, I'm really interested, I honestly like them both. If they worked just a little bit better with playing music for say in my iTunes library that's not on Apple Music, I would really highly suggest these guys. They sound absolutely incredible. I just wish the software side of them worked just a little bit better out of the box. Anyway, the software that they come with is actually a beta software of 11.2.5. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we will see a beta software of 11.3 and the software update tab within the HomeKit actually show up so we can update these guys to a beta software and hopefully then we can check out stereo pairing. So now that we're done with the unboxing, setup, and demo of the HomePod, let's talk a little bit about the tech inside. Its processor is the A8 chip, which is the same processor that was used in devices like the iPhone 6. But this processing power is not only used to power Siri, but to analyze the HomePod's surrounding and project the appropriate sound depending on where it is placed in the room. Siri on the HomePod can accept most of the same requests that it can on your phone as well. And a really good way to think of the HomePod is like an extension of your phone that now places Siri ambiently in the background of your house. Siri can play music, toggle HomeKit accessories like Philips Hue lights, and even take personal requests, like reading your messages or answering calls. So since I literally just received this product and unboxed it in front of you, I have yet to really use this long enough to give a fair review for it, but I can give my first impressions. After handling this guy for about an hour, I am impressed at how easy it is to set up. It's just as intuitive and simple as setting up your AirPods. Secondly, like many other people have been commenting on this as well, its form factor is a lot smaller than I was expecting, which that isn't a bad thing, it just looked bigger on Apple's site and in their trailer videos. 
it almost makes it more impressive to me that this good of sound can come from such a small speaker. I mean, I'm pretty into music and sound systems to the extent I have a 7.22 Dolby Atmos surround sound system in my recording studio, so when I first saw the HomePod, I wasn't too interested and didn't think it could remotely compare to that, but in reality, it actually does. The bass is absolutely phenomenal even though it's only a 4 inch woofer in this thing, and the mid and high range audio is crystal clear even when it is turned all the way up. And that's because the HomePod uses its 7 tweeter array to create an atmospheric surround sound-esque feel, directing the vocals at the listener and projecting the ambient track sound out of the sides and rear of the speaker, of course depending on where it is placed that is. If it's in the center of the room, it will project the equal sound quality out of every speaker. Anyway, I'm most looking forward to see how the speaker sounds in a stereo setup, but for now that feature is absent at launch, and it'll be introduced in a software update later this year. So when it comes down to it, this product is tailored to users who are already well invested in Apple's ecosystem. If for say, you're already well invested in Apple Music, you have a ton of HomeKit compatible smart accessories, and already enjoy Surrey, this product is going to feel like a perfect extension to your current setup. That being said, this product seems to miss a huge marketplace for Spotify, Android, or just smart speaker users in general. As of now, the HomePod only works with Apple Music, you will need an iOS device running iOS 11.2.5 to even set up the thing in the first place, and once it is all set up, there isn't too much to customize with it. Surrey, as many know, can't do quite as much as other smart assistants out there like Amazon Alexas, and its commands can't be modified with the use of third-party apps like IFTTT. Furthermore, you can't use the speaker as a normal Bluetooth speaker, and just like Apple's iPhone, there unfortunately is no auxiliary output or input on the device. Music can only be streamed through it through AirPlay compatible services, and setting this thing up with the Apple TV is nice, but you'll have to manually enable streaming each time you want to use that. So my final thoughts are, while the speaker is mostly tailored to people already well invested in Apple's ecosystem, the HomePod's hardware on the other hand is spot on. Apple is typically late to the party it seems for a lot of technology, but when they do release something, they do it right, AirPods being a great example of this. The HomePod is no exception either. With this product, Apple seems to have focused on the HomePod's primary function and that is playing music and sounding great. I'm sure with future updates of iOS or HomePod OS, there will be new features and new compatibility updates to incorporate these other areas where it's lacking. But for now, I'm guessing Apple just wanted to have the product's release and the features it initially comes with to be spot on and work flawlessly out of the gate instead of shipping it with a bunch of half finished and buggy features. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching my video on Apple's new HomePod. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think of it. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to stay updated when I release future videos just like this one and to stay on top of jailbreaking news. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and thank you so much for your continued support, but until next time, this is Tony, signing out.